Shad Muzuzu, Shad Mafuta, Shad Anointing. Amen and amen. amen. And they all mean anointing in different languages. Amen. Praise God for us. Praise God. <coughs> one, who, one who share a thought with us concerning, with reference to prayers. And what we want to talk about is something that is also personal to us and also has to do with you too. Because for me, I, I'm privileged to talk to the Lord all the time. I talk to God all the time. Which is why you may not necessarily see me pray. You may not see me pray. But it is dangerous for you, on the other hand, because once you don't see me pray, you want to imitate me. See? So people may, we've told you before how somebody came and stayed with us here in this house for like a week and said to me, he noticed I don't pray. I said, yes, I don't need to pray because the one you are praying to talks to me. And we told him, for the seven days he was here, all the prayers he prayed, we were telling him, this was what you prayed about. This was what God said we should tell you. This is what you prayed about. But you see, I personally didn't know that the reason why the Lord brought him and made that experience known was so that I could help others. Which means, for somebody like me, I'm supposed to pray so that others can learn how to pray. You see? Yes, and um, because I've been in situations for years where I was praying every day, from morning to evening. We've told you before, I fasted for five years every day, praying every day, sleeping in church, praying every day. So I think I've prayed my life already. Mm. But others have not. And you know, when it comes to prayer, you have a bank account with, with prayer where you make deposits. When we pray like that, we make deposits. Why? Because in the day of trouble, you will not be able to pray. And no matter how hard you try to pray in the day of trouble, there's no answer. It is what you have already stored up that will work for you. So we can call for a prayer meeting and say, let's pray these prayers and give you prayer points and we pray. And sometimes those prayer points may not be useful now, but can be useful in the next 50 years. See. So you see, without prayer, your destiny cannot fully form. You see, it's like a, a hen that lays eggs. But if she does not go through the process of incubating the eggs she laid, it will not hash. And prayer is an act of incubating a future. No matter the glorious prophecies you have received, until you pray, those things may not see the light of day. Because there are forces that are ready to abort whatever God has planned for you. So you may have been told you have a great future. You may have been told you have a great ministry. You may have been told you own chains of business. Can you reduce the volume, please? Uh, okay, thank you. Yes. So, you may have been told you have a great future. But you see, without prayer, you cannot form. All right, now. 
Personally, I've seen victories in my personal life. God has opened doors for me. And we'll be honest with you. Prayer is not something I feel like doing anymore. But I have to do it. And that is why prayer is a labor. It's not something you like to do. The Bible speaks of Epaphras. The Bible says Epaphras was a man who labored in prayers. He labored in it. So prayer is a labor, and no one enjoys laboring. So personally, I really don't like to pray. But one thing you may want to ask is, well, brother, see God talks to you. God shows you things. How come we are where we are today as a church? It looks like we lost everything. I mean, we were once in a lovely venue and all that and all that. Well, that has nothing to do with prayer. That has to do with my own foolishness. And it's simple. Trusted the people I shouldn't have trusted. It's just simple. So you can pray right and trust the wrong people. You see that? You can pray right. God hears you. Told you he's going to do this thing. But... One thing we never care to ask is, is, who are the people you are bringing my way to make this thing a reality? The truth of the matter is, if the person was not with you from the beginning, the person does not care where you are going. And that's the truth. So you see, to put confidence in, in those that I shouldn't, have put confidence in, brought us to where we are. So, but it has nothing to do with my prayer life. It doesn't mean God doesn't talk to me. God still talks to me. He still does. He still does. Always. I was going to preach something else. He whispered to me, no, change the prayer. Change the sermon. Preach this one. So whatever I'm preaching to you is not something I, I prepared. He told me, change it. <clears throat> talk to them about so so so. So you see, he talks to me. He talks to me. But but now I can see I need to pray. Not because of me, but so that others can pray. Because they are not where I am. You see that? They are not where I am. So that they can make deposits in their prayer banks. They are, you can make deposits. Because you may think things are going now the right way. But you don't know what the enemy has planned in the next 20 years. Where was God when this child died? And they tried everything. Well, the prayer you refused to pray, or the prayer meeting you refused to attend 15 years ago, could not save the child because you never made any prayer deposit for that purpose. Maybe if you had, the child would have been alive. So, now, so if you are trying to say, no, 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 brother, see, this thing about God talking to you, I don't believe it anymore. See where you are. Like I said, it was an act of my own stupidity. And I learned a great deal trusting those I shouldn't have trusted, whether the person is a leader. See? Yeah. Because God's voice is still supreme. Yeah. And it's not as if he didn't tell me. He did. He did. And I said, but this person is my leader. The Lord said, okay, I'm telling you. So you see, it's not as if there was something wrong with my prayer life. What someone will start praying for one hour? What someone will pray one hour to hear God for? By the time I just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, he's already telling me, do this, do this, everything will be fine. Do you understand? So you see, it, and it will always be like that for me, forever. It's not as if God will stop talking to me. Do you understand? But I need to pray. Say it. Say, I need to pray. I need to pray. Yes. Because some of you don't pray because you say, I have a prophet I will talk to. I have a prophet. If I see Brother Elsie, he will tell me what to do. And so, I know that. But, but you need to pray. You need to pray. 
What if when you were coming to Brother Osi, he's not around? In fact, quite frankly, he will not be around often. That is the truth. So you need to pray. Because I don't want to be aware here that your child died. <laughs> See, brother, see what happened. It's like the enemy at it again. No, the enemy have always been at it. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't do anything about it. And you know, at the end of the day, the Lord who sees your fault, you didn't teach them. You didn't teach them how to pray. So it's time to pray. It's time to pray. Not necessarily because of you, but because of the future. Future. You can mistakenly give someone a needle, an injection that can cost you your license. And the Lord has seen it ahead and called for a prayer meeting now. Because this thing is going to happen 20 years coming at the prime of your success. And then you find the person crashing down. <laughs> we need to pray. But now, when we pray, Another area people have issues with is whether or not God hears us. Yes, because we all say God hears us when we pray. But how do you really know that God hears you? How do I know that when I prayed, it was God who spoke to me and said, it's okay, stand up, do this thing. Excuse me. And, and what do I do? How do I know that God is not ignoring me when He's silent? The truth of the matter is, whenever God is silent, it just means someone already has the answer for you. It's there in scriptures. King Saul prayed in First Samuel chapter twenty-eight. Prayed, sought the prophets, so patronized the Eurotondo. You know what the Eurotondo means? The ephod met the righteous ones, spoke to them, and, and God was quiet. That's in chapter 28. And the Lord was quiet, not because he hated King Saul. It was someone who did not like King Saul. God chose King Saul. So God really didn't have issues with King Saul. But since Samuel the seer had issues with King Saul, God had issues with him. But God was the one who chose King Saul the, in the first place, and wanted to establish his kingdom forever. But it was somewhere the seer out of anger who said it will not continue. So God can promise you a good marital life, but if your prophet said this marriage, because of what you have done, it will scatter, it will not work. So you may not need your prophet now, you may not need your pastor now, but you might need him or need her soon. And we want to tell you, a minister is worse than a demon. Demons can be casted out. You can't cast a minister out. If he holds anything against you, he can tell you. I mean, is that not what Moses did? Yes. Moses said to God, Lord, don't collect the offerings of Abiram. Yes. God said, do not. Moses said to the Lord, don't accept his offering. And he went and commanded the ground to open and he swallowed Abiram. So ministers, as good as they are, they can be very dangerous too. And you can't cast them out. And please make no mistakes about it. If a man of God places a curse on someone, don't think another one can do, cast it out. That one carries a different grace. Graces are not the same. Okay. And, and you know that you enjoy help all the time doesn't mean it is well with you. Please, don't make that mistake. That people are always coming to be of help to you doesn't mean it is well with you. Do you understand? Yes. Because even the people that are helping you out, who is helping them out? Have you not noticed they are self-sustained, but you are not? You call that help the favor of God. Is it really the favor of God? Maybe a prayer you did not pray five years ago is the reason why you are living at the mercies of others. It's time to pray, man. But King Saul, when he patronized the Lord and the Lord was quiet, 
you find that in 1 Samuel chapter 28, it was simply because in chapter 27, King David was already in the camp of the enemy to destroy them for King Saul, even though King Saul was after his life. And so there was no need for God to talk anymore. But sometimes we get very uncomfortable. Because God is quiet now, we can be so desperate, we'll go and seek help where we shouldn't patronize help. But God has already, the reason why he was quiet is because he has already done something about it. Say it, say he has already done something about it. That's why he's quiet. He's already done something about it. But you keep bugging him. And you say, Lord, I will disturb you today. <laughs> if you don't answer me, I will show you that I will not let you go. Where would you find him to hold him? So now, does God really hear us? Now, before you say yes, how do you know God hears you? Maybe that's the reason why you are not encouraged to pray. Because you are not sure again whether God hears you. Now, let's tell you something. The Lord is just whispering something to me. Let's tell you something. One man's testimony is another man's disappointment. That's what he just told me now. Because your testimony is another man's disappointment. Maybe you don't want it, but... We were going to tell you that your testimony, your testimony will bring another person great disappointment. So let, let's look at, does God really hear us when we pray? How do we know that God hears us? How do we know? Maybe that's why you are not motivated to pray anymore. Maybe. And one of the biggest mistakes Christians make is, you, you have been going to church since. See, now you've been praying since. God has not answered you, so why should I worry myself praying? No, 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 no. No. Maybe that one is not doing it right. Maybe. But probably you can do it right. Or maybe that one was supposed to be like that. Didn't Paul say, even though we are poor, we are making many rich? Yes. Yes. Wow. Who do you can't be better? Just, but brother, see, things didn't really work out for you in the past. Where well, but things can work out for you? Wow. But still doesn't mean God doesn't talk to me. So you see, so there's a big, you need to separate the difference between an act of foolishness and an answer to prayers. Doesn't mean God doesn't hear you, but you can make a foolish choice, like I did in the past. Like I said, putting confidence in people. See? And it makes me look like my prayer life was not effective. You see? So there's a way you can put your confidence in someone. And it will, and because of the, the, the consequences of that, of that action, it can make it look like God does not talk, God does not like you, God does not want you, and God hates you. No, it doesn't mean that at all. It doesn't mean that in any way. And you must learn to separate an act of stupidity <laughs> to an act of, to, with your prayer life, you must separate the two. See, see, I must separate the two. Because the truth of the matter is we can be stupid sometimes. Yes, we all can. Well, you are not being honest now, but you can. That's just the truth. We all can be stupid sometimes. We are not saying we want to, but we can be. And sometimes circumstances can make one take a stupid decision. Which is why it is time to pray, because sometimes the truth of the matter is desperate times are coming. Yeah. Yeah. That's just the truth. Yes, the Lord told me that upstairs. Yes, desperate times are coming. Yes, 
But what's your storage like? Yes, sir. What's your storage like? Trying times are coming. Even with this country. Mm -hmm. Trying times are coming. Because the decisions that are being made in the corridors of political power will grind the economy, really. So trying times are coming. Where the to those on top who want to remain perpetually on top. You see this thing, middle class, they will soon change the language. You see? But what would you do then? You see why prayers are necessary. Someone say, let's pray for this country. Others have done it. They are still doing it. And God is answering. But those in the corridors of power can make stupid choices. That can make the prayers for the nation useless. The same way too it can be with your life too. Yeah. So say this. Say I must learn to separate stupidity from my prayer life. That has nothing to do with it. But one act of stupidity can make your prayer life look ineffective. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Because sometimes you have people say, oh God, I prayed, I prayed. Why did this thing happen? But you were just stupid. You, I mean, acknowledge for one. I'm not saying you are stupid, please. I'm not insulting you. But, but you can just acknowledge, man, I was stupid. Like, you, know, you know, some people are not honest with themselves. They say, man, I was foolish there, man. Lord, I know it was my fault. I, I know. It's not that you don't hear me. I know I was just foolish. I knew I was too desperate and I went to patronize so-so person. Oh, man, Lord, I'm so sorry. It was my stupidity. It still doesn't mean what you prayed about is nullified. But acknowledging a fault before God even makes God say, okay, fine. We're in line. But if you still insist on your act of stupidity and demand it as a right that God must do what he told you, God says, man, who is talking here? And, and who is the boss? You or me? So, who does God really hear us? How do we know that God hears us? How do we know that he does? Because we need to know. Because if you don't know whether or not God hears you, you will not be willing to pray as you should. Like we said, prayer is not something that is convenient or interesting. Not even to me, but I have to do it. And so the only joy I enjoy in prayer is the fact that I know that I know that God hears me. But question, before I say I know that he hears me, what is the proof? that I know he hears me. Let's suppose God does not talk to me. But when I pray, how do I know he hears me? Go to 1 John. 1 John. Do you understand what we're saying to you so far? <clears throat> Are you in First John? Yes, sir. Go to chapter five. First John chapter five. You're all looking good, amen. amen. You but your prayer life must look better. Yes. That's just the truth. Yes. Don't just look good with a frustrated prayer life. No, look good and let your prayer life look better. Say it. Say it. How many of you know you need this lesson? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look good and let your prayer life be good. That's just the truth. But there's a confidence you must have. There's a confidence that must accompany it. Look at verses 8. Let's read verses 8. And there are three 
want to go. Now he says there are three that bear record in the earth. Spirit, water, and blood. Spirit, water, and blood. He said these three are grey. So when he says water, it doesn't mean spirit. He says spirit, water, and blood. Water there does not mean the word of God. No. He said there are three that bear record in the earth. Spirit, water, blood. In the earth, spirits are here. How many of you agree? Yes, sir. Holy Spirit, evil spirits, they are here. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. There's water everywhere. Yes. Clean water, good water. There's blood everywhere. Right? Yes, sir. If you don't agree, cut yourself. <laughs> you know there's blue. He said, these things bear witness in the earth. Mm. No wonder a native doctor has confidence. He tells you, bring a goat and slaughter it. As long as that thing has blood, he knows that whatever spirit he's talking to will do something. How about you? How about you? <clears throat> Which spirit is on your side? <clears throat> you drink water every day. So, so why do these people use water every day? They, they, they spray water, or rural water, and all that. Well, it, it says water is a witness. Water has authority in the end. Then it says blood. So which means as long as there's anything that has blood, I can get what I want. Now read the preceding verse, verse 7. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Lord, and the Holy Spirit. You see, the Father, you see that? So you see why the water is not the word of God? He said the Father, the Almighty himself, the word of God, and the Holy Spirit. So you see, when he says spirits in verses 8, he's not referring to Holy Spirit. There are spirits in the earth. They take records. That's what we're saying. The day you refused to come for prayer meeting, there was a spirit who took record of it. And the leader led prayers and prayed. The leader who is leading prayers and others who were praying with the leader, they have blood in them. At least you say blood is thicker than water, don't you say so? Yeah, he's not talking about relatives. The spirits that took record, you did not come for prayer meeting. And the prayers that were led that day, <coughs> you, it was supposed to help your 50 years from now. But he didn't. So the person has an accident, the two legs are cut off. The prayer the person refused to attend 50 years earlier. Now what the person is doing now is just to look at pictures of the past when the person used to stand. He says spirits, Spirit. water, water. And, blood. and blood, they bear record. <clears throat> There's a reason why we're showing you this. Well, listen, let's tell you, as far as we're concerned, <clears throat> we say to our folks here, many of us are not really serious with life. Life is too serious. We've been privileged to see some things. Life is too serious. Many of us here are not. Wait until life gives you a slap. If life should slap you, <laughs> if life should slap you, not because you want to be slapped, but life can slap you. <laughs> you will not have the mouth to pray again. You hear someone you were, you just finished talking to, slept and woke up with a stroke, the mouth twisted. You don't know it was a slap. 
spirit slapped him. You want to pray again? Let's see how you pray with a twisted mouth. But, and I know of such a person. We used to tell her, come for prayer meeting. She will give you an excuse. I'm going to Maryland. I'm going to do this. I'm going to see my grandchild. I'm going to see this. Bam. We had a 30 days prayer and fasting. The 30th day, she woke up with stroke. The mouth twisted. She called us on the phone. We were just entering Virginia, Chesapeake, Virginia. Yeah. We were entering. It was around 4 a.m. She called us. The husband. And we prayed. That's how she could still talk again. But the body twisted. No more Maryland. No more going to BBC anymore. The slap of life. Don't let life slap you. You may think you don't need it now. Because you may say, oh, brother, see, see the things that happen to you. How about you? What is, you? Do you know what is waiting for you? You don't know what is waiting for you. When you ask some people that tragedy before, they never, it wasn't as if they were expecting it, never anticipated it, but it came nonetheless. How prepared are you when it comes? That's the truth, because let's tell you the truth, everyone has a dark hour. Maybe I'm going through mine. How about yours? Because when Jesus' dark hour came, he could not pray. He surrendered. Because when the dark hour comes, you surrender. And when you try to pray, when the dark hour comes, it is useless. Jesus prayed for three hours. Nothing. Because the dark hour arrested him, apprehended him. You are looking at the man. Jesus addressed it to the dark hour. He calls it the power of darkness. Every power of darkness has an hour. God grants them the opportunity to do and undo. Your anointing cannot work. Your grace cannot manifest. Everyone has his own dark hour. What are you prepared for? So you see, when we say let's pray, it may not necessarily be for now. It may be for the dark hour coming. Because it is something every human being, say it, it is something every human being must experience. Listen, whether you believe what we're telling you or not, it doesn't matter. It will come. You, I will still be alive. Then you will still come. I'm not dying now. So we'll still be alive. So if you don't believe it, you will see it. Some, theirs came when they were 50. Some came when they were 45. At least some came, their own came when they were 28. Some, their own came when they are 25. It comes once. And when it hits, it is without mercy. Even Jesus anointed Jesus. It finished him. The disciples ran away. When the dark hour come, your best friend will abandon you. Your best friend. It's true. <laughs> Don't understand. Even your friend that is with you will be very helpless. He will just be looking at you. One can be looking at you at the sick bed and can't do anything. They can't share the drip with you. They can't take the dialysis with you. They will be looking at you. They can be bringing you food. They can be telling you, get well soon. John, who loved Jesus, he loved Jesus so much that he stood by the cross just looking. Helpless. So even the one who cares for you, whether a husband or a wife, can only just be by your bedside. Hmm, don't understand this thing. <laughs> so it's time to pray. Why? Spirits are taking records. There's water. Even the water you drink and you have in your house is a witness. Water. The one you open from the faucet is looking at you. So you see, so here, let's fix what may be fighting you here in the earth before you face the forces in heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you been able to conquer the witnesses in the earth before you patronize the witnesses of heaven? The Father himself, the Almighty, his word and his spirit. So Holy Spirit is, in, is a witness of heaven, but there are spirits in the earth. Yeah. At least, if you, have you been able to overcome some? If you can, can you befriend them? Have you not noticed how many rich native doctors do you have? But a, a, a voodoo priest, a native doctor, 
and obioma or a boko can 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 patronize can befriend the spirit. The spirit says, I will not attack you, but you'll be perpetually poor. I will work for you, but you just remain on this level. And the man agrees. He has seen the power of that spirit. He knows if he does otherwise, it will slaughter him and his generation. So he remains perpetually poor. The spirit says, you'll be under this tree. You will be sleeping under this tree. You we even arrange seat for you to come to church. Say, in this place. But the native doctor does not complain. He's under a tree. He can't do otherwise. You know why sometimes we behave some, the way we behave sometimes? It's because spirits have not handled you yet. Mm -hmm. And maybe because someone present is the reason why harm cannot come near you. Wait until you go away. You know, some of you, you want to be on your own. Go. <laughs> then you will see life. You will call God. God say, what are you saying? Even King David mightily anointed, the time came, he saw what happened to King Saul in his own life. He started crying every day, talking to God every day. That's how he was able to write Psalms. His dark hour was lengthy. Jesus' own, it was just for one day. He died the next day. King David's own, he lasted years. At the point, pneumonia caught up with him. The dark hour is coming. Well, it's time to pray, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, we're not telling you this to scare you. Whether you are scared, you were already scared before you came. I didn't put fear in you. See your life. If, you, if your life is that bold, why are you not as successful as you should be? Someone say, I am. Who told you? Someone is still better. And it is the truth. So how can a spirit in the earth favor this one and not favor this one? He's telling you there are, John here is telling you, there are three that bears witness. So there are spirits that govern the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, when people say, um, God has left this earth to man, man runs the earth. John says, spirits control it. Water control it. Blood control it. These three bear record. Isn't it amazing when you were born, water and blood came out from your mother's body? Yes, sir. He followed you here. And his spirit welcomed you here. Now, look at verses 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Do you believe on the name? Yes. yes. Yeah. But you see, John here, to, to the Jews, he told them, believe the name. To the Gentiles, Paul said, confess the lordship of the name, but believe his resurrection. You see that? So here John was talking to Jews. But there is something he's trying to say. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Right? And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Right? So you already believe, don't you? Okay, verses 14. And this is the confidence. That we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears at us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. He says, there is a confidence we have. That when we ask, he hears. Why? We already have something. This is his life. Eh? Yes, sir. Okay. But the part we want you to see here is that he says, God hears us. But what does God want to see? Your confidence. Your confidence. That's his will when it comes to prayer. He wants to see your confidence. Not you telling him, Lord, I'm confident. <laughs> no, no. He, 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 he can tell whether you are just saying it with your mouth 
or you are acting it because you have come to believe it. See? Here he's telling you there's a confidence you should have by reason of what you have come to believe. And so on, with that confidence, you can ask anything yes, yes. and he will hear you. Yes. So a man can have confidence that this lady will be his, but does not have confidence whether or not God hears him. Wow. Wow. See? <laughs> has confidence. A woman or a man can have confidence that they will pass this exam. But don't have the confidence. Whether or not God hears them. This is, this is the confidence we have. There's a confidence we have. What is the confidence? It's if I ask anything, I know he hears me. That's his will. So he no, according to his will, ask him faith. What is faith? Pistis. What is pistis? Persuasion. What is persuasion? Confidence. Confidence. So what confidence do you have? So if you say, I don't know whether God did not hear me, he didn't. It's obvious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no confidence. Amen. I, I mean, is it not true? So say, I'm not. I, I don't know whether God he, heard me. No, He didn't. He did. Why? Why didn't He hear me? Because He said it. You already said you don't know, but I know He heard me. What did He say? I just know He heard me. He didn't say I will respond back to you. He said I heard you. I heard. You. And of course, if he was not interested in fixing what you were asking for, he would not even hear you. So that means expect what you told him to do. So we say, no, the way God is going to do it, we cannot tell. No, we can tell because I told him how he should do it. <laughs> it's the confidence that I have. It's the confidence that I have. It's the confidence that I have. It's the confidence. That I'm going to have this score in my exam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. And the good news is that he can exceed it. Yes, sir. Whoa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a confidence. It's a confidence we have. It's a confidence that we have. And you see, <clears throat> here, you must. Now, notice what he's trying to say. That he didn't say that he said. Though he said, if you ask anything, but anything must be deliberately specific. You, you can't say, oh God, I want a raffle. No, no, Lord, I, I, I prefer Wrangler instead. No, 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 Lord, I, I prefer a Pajero, Pajero Jeep. God said, man, what's wrong with this place? See, see, there's no confidence. Well, let me have the Pajero Jeep first. <laughs> then I can, it can build, boost more confidence in me yes. Yes. to request for a Wrangler. Amen. But why the Pajero Jeep is yet to come, you're already changing it to a Wrangler, Wrangler. to a Range Rover. <laughs> God, God, God says, me, what, what's wrong? Please, don't, don't waste my time here. <laughs> no, don't, don't waste my time here. And you know, God does have the temperaments of a woman. You know, there's a way a man can say to a lady he likes, and the lady says, please don't waste my time here. Look, uh, you know, there's some ladies who, who are like that, my brother, did you come to play? I didn't come to play. I'm tired of playing. Do you understand? Yes, sir. But, but sometimes it looks like when it comes to our prayer life, some of us are like that. It looks like we, we like to waste God's time. So you see why now, when it looks like your prayer life is not effective, you can see clearly it is just your sheer act of stupidity. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now we said Amen. that earlier. Yes, you can see it now. Yes, why? Why is it an act of stupidity? No confidence. You see why you did otherwise? No, no confidence. 
They say, this is the confidence. This is the confidence. confidence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That if we ask anything, anything, he hears us. He didn't tell you when he's going to do it. But he heard it. And with what you said, he, he could tell the sense of urgency. He could tell the sense of urgency. And spirits took record of it. The spirit in the earth. What a bore witness of it. Even blood, even within you, at least you have blood. He took record of it that this one knows what he's saying or she's saying. You see, at that point, the labor of prayer has been taken off you. Yes, sir. A confidence. confidence. See? Yes. So, you see, God watches out for our attitude, yes. your disposition. Yes, sir. Here, he's not talking about whether you shouted or not. Because shout is not a proof of confidence. Shout can be a proof of fear. You can pray shouting. People will think you are confident, but you say, this one is afraid. Mm. Have you ever walked in the dark and you are shouting? Who is there? Even in your own house. <laughs> Even in your own house. You shout, who is there? You say, this is afraid. <laughs> because you saw the door yank, one breeze. Say, so who is there? Why did you shout, who is there? Fear. And when somebody say, oh, it's Susanna, I say, why didn't you knock? See, you're angry. <laughs> Fear. Oh, man. What is it? Confidence. There's a confidence. confidence. We have. Wow. Maybe this is what the voodoo priest has in the negative. They always have this confidence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That the vegetable they are mixing for you who fix the stomach for yes, And you so believe them that you have confidence <clears throat> that when you drink that concoction, everything will be fine with you. And you became well. Not necessarily because the thing did anything. But what produced it, what sparked up the relief? Your confidence. So you see, if there's anything the enemy will seek to attack in your life, is your confidence. You see why things can collapse around you so as to make you give up. No, he said, Paul is being confident of this very thing. That he who began this good work <coughs> will show you confidence. There's a confidence. And with this confidence, Knowing that each time you ask the Lord for anything, He hears us, you become a master yes, over sir. circumstances. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But then notice one area that you have not noticed, that I want you to notice. He says, This is the confidence. <clears throat> right? Yes, sir. That we what? That, that we have in Him. Right? He hears us. Question. Who is the him? He didn't tell us who it was. It is you and I that presume it is God. But already he says, God is minding heavenly business. The Holy Spirit and his word, they are minding heavenly business. But in the earth, there are spirits water and blood that mind the earth's business. Now, whatever you want the Lord to do is an earthly business because you are here. So who do you think should be responsible for your provisions here in the earth? Spirit, water, and blood. So who are you talking to? We should ask you. <laughs> All right, now go back to verses 11. This is the record that God has given us eternal life, right? Yes, sir. Now, what is eternal life? John, 3, John 17, verses 3 says, Knowing the Father as the only true God. See, Jesus said, This is life eternal. 
that they might know thee as the only true God. Eternal life has to do with what? In knowledge yes, of knowing who the Father really is. You see why you have the confidence? Yes, sir. To ask anything. Yes, sir. And it will be granted. So the question is, how much of the Father do you know? How much? And maybe this is the reason why for some, it may not be right for them to pray. Someone just has to pray it for them. Because they don't know the Father enough. But someone does. I can tell the Father, do this thing for this person. You see why? You may say you don't need your pastor, but you may need him. You may need him. Because there's something they know that you don't. And what they know is not really for them. It's supposed to be for you. But you don't come near them. And so they are quiet. So they look at you in the suffering. And they remain with you there. They're already used to it. They've gone through it already. Now, and this is the record that God has given us what? Eternal life. And this life is in his son. When he says us, there, John was speaking for himself and the others. Because Jesus referred to it in John 17. That only the people God has given, the Father has given him, are the people he has been permitted to give eternal life to. Now, he that had the son had life. Now, notice that. Now, notice he didn't say have eternal life. He that had the son had life. And he that had not the son had not life. Now, the son here does not necessarily mean Jesus Christ. The son here also speaks of your leaders. He said, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. See? So when you have someone around you that God is using, you have access to life. You see? You have access to life. Because what they know, they can tell you and tell you how to go about the challenge. But we don't like to come around. You can come to them for prayer and they can pray. Okay, now let's show you something. And these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. He that had the Son. That ye may know that ye have what? Eternal life. And that ye may believe in the name of the Son of God. Okay. Hmm. Go to verses 5. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness. Because the truth is, because the spirit is truth. You see what he's saying here? He's saying as long as you have blood in your body. See, here he's talking about the biological birth of Jesus. See, that blood that came out and that water, it follows you to this day. Like it followed Jesus when he was born. It followed you. He's still following you. That water and blood that came out when you were born, he's still following you today. And he's there with you for a witness. And then there's a spirit to record it. So that spirit is my angel. Well, he should have mentioned the angel here. He didn't. He says spirit. So the blood and water is following you and the spirit are taking records. Question. What is that blood like? That is following you. Because the water and blood that came from your mother's womb when you were born was supposed to be to your advantage. That's what John is saying here. I mean, he's talking to Christians, but he's tracing it to their biological birth. He said, that water and blood that came still follows you and is bearing witness 
question. Is it bearing witness against you or is it supposed to bear witness for you? Because it should make things easy with you. You see why we said many have not been serious. You don't know what is talking against you. When um, Feniha's wife gave birth to her son, Ikabod, she cursed her child and died. The child she gave birth to. She said the glory of Israel has departed. And named the child so and died. And you know, it followed the child for a very long while until the child prayed. You see, that water and blood followed him that he would never see glory. So the water and blood was navigating his life. Spirits were following him until he prayed for a change. So now, this is the confidence that we have in him. Who is the him? He says, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. This is the confidence that we have in him. So whoever the Son of God is that has received the spirit of adoption and has received knowledge, such a person, he says, believe you, what that person is telling you. It will boost your confidence to ask anything. You see, Anna was married to a man, Elkanah, for over 10 years and no child. But she kept coming to the temple for the past 10 years. And when she saw the way Eli operated as a priest, she had confidence in Eli and then began to pray before him. And Eli said, your prayers are heard. Even though the same Eli God was angry with, but he could declare favor, fruitfulness. See, one of the things you must carefully, and I will say carefully because sometimes things like that may look very unavoidable, but it can be avoided. One of the things you must do is never measure your spiritual condition or never measure your spirituality by the condition your leader or a man of God or a woman of God, depending on whoever is leading you. Never measure your spirituality by the circumstances they are in. They may be facing challenging situations. That's not your business. Your business is, I have confidence in what they carry. Yes, it is supposed to work for me. Yes, Which means that they admire you. That what they carry is supposed to be for you, but you don't ask. Jesus said you receive not because you ask not. Yeah. So what is your confidence? That's what God really wants to see. Yeah? What is your confidence? Why are you so overtaken by the fear that you will be all alone? He says, but there is a confidence we should have that if we ask anything, He hears us. He hears us. Now, let's show you one final scripture to I know God hears me. <coughs> How many of you believe God hears you? Yes, sir. Okay. Luke. Sorry, Mark. Let's hear what Apostle Peter has to say. Because Apostle Peter and John were very good friends. Mark 11. So it doesn't matter whether you scream or shout. All God wants to see is your word, your confidence.
Okay. <clears throat> look at look at verse 17. Let's read. Read it again. Then he shall say to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you are made a den of thieves. Again. Then he shall say to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you are made a den of thieves. He said, It shall be called. It has been written. It shall be called the house of prayer. He didn't say the house of miracles. He said, but you have made it a place for business. So you come to church with the intention of securing business success. He says, no, it's supposed to be a house of prayer. What did he mean by it's supposed to be a house of prayer? Does it mean that the people are supposed to be praying all the time? Yes and then no. Let's start with the no first. Then you understand, yes, yes sir. why it is supposed to be a house of prayer. What did he mean by that? Okay. Go to verses 24. Go to verses 24. Read. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, will you get to receive them and you will have them. So, now let's read verses 17. In and verses 24 together. Can you do that? Yes, okay, so, okay. Don't read too loud, but just read. Let me hear you. One, two, go. And then he sought, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it again of these. Therefore I say unto you, Whatever you do, ask for the prayer, will be the end of the season. Read that verse 24 again. Therefore I say unto you, whatever things you have done to the Lord, you see that? Whatever, whatever you desire, whatever thing you desire when you pray, believe. What does that suggest? Confidence. Believe that you have them. Then it is yours. So when Jesus came that day, he didn't find people like that anymore. Jesus didn't find men of confidence anymore in the church. You have them today in many churches. Men without confidence anymore. They don't have confidence. A man trusting his wife only to pray. When they have it, she say, please pray. You know you are the one that is the pastor, the spiritual. Pray. Really. So you see, the house of God has become a place of thieves for you. So why to some of us it is a house of prayer, to others it's a place for business. So, a land social CEO goes there. A land social person comes there. I know that if I go there they will help my condition. He calls it a den of thieves. Both the leaders and the members. They have become thieves. So let's ask ourselves, how does God see us? How does God see this church? You see why the Lord said, teach them how to pray. Let's not make a den of thieves here. Yes, sir. So the issue is not with God. The issue is your lack of confidence. So what is it you want God to do for you? Well, let's pray now. Yes, At least we've heard him say, yes, sir. if he doesn't work, then we know it is his fault. <laughs> but this thing works. Yes, it's yes, the confidence that I have. Confidence I know it will work. I know it will work. Yeah. We we are around South Carolina traveling and the Lord was telling us about someone here and we called the person and said, 
the place you went to read for the exam is the reason why you didn't pass. Don't do that again. Do it to the place. Read, then you will pass. The person went, read, wrote the exam. In fact, the exam was so early, the person woke us up from sleep. We were in the hotel room sleeping around 9 a.m. And the person was calling us. I think the, I thought the person was calling us so that we can pray as she was going to write the exam. The person said, I've already finished the exam. And she scored a 90. Wow. You understand? Yes. Sister Anita. Sister Anita. A medical exam. Scored over 90. The same exam. There's a confidence we have. When God speaks, it is yes. It's a confidence. Someone say, I'm not too sure whether God is talking. He doesn't. No, I have a confidence. Spirit, water, and blood are at work. It's in the Bible. I didn't write it. So, if you are trying to have issues understanding God, leave God alone. At least spirit. You have blood. You see water. God said, those ones can walk. Those ones can walk. It should boost your confidence. Yeah. But she's a very brilliant person. But where she went to read, there, that was where spirits attacked that exam. Mm. So we, we took, the Lord told us, tell her to change location. Go to another place, read. When you read in this also place, this is where you pass, then you pass your exam. You think it's the book you know. It's direction. Yes. Direction. direction makes things easy. It's, it's not carry book and read. How much do you know? What you are trying to read, someone wrote it. <laughs> it says, yeah. this is Jesus talking. It's marked in red. Whatever you desire. When you pray. He didn't say before you pray. When you pray. It's time to pray. He says, believe you have received it before you have it. You are waiting to have it to believe it. He says, believe you have it. Believe you have received it before you have it. People say, that's faith. That's not faith. Actually, that's not faith. That's confidence. The faith, faith comes when you hear to act. You have heard now. When we say now, let's pray, you are acting. That's faith. But then you can act faith and still not have the results without the confidence that you have received what you are acting. The woman with the issue of blood said, if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be free. She acted. And when she, when she acted, she didn't just only act, she believed what she desired. Now, do you know what we call fantasies today? Desires, actually, is what we refer to as fantasies. And as long as you see them as fantasies, they will not see the light of day. That's it. Somebody asks us in Atlanta, who should I marry? I say, marry your fantasy. Your fantasy is loyal to you. Your fantasy will always be faithful. And you know your fantasy is not a Christian, but he can be with you. Because you can create it. It's your desire. Believe it. Create it. Because God's fantasies may not be what you like. So if you say, God, show me. <laughs> Who has the desire? Is it not you? So there's one thing, one more thing we have not really done in our prayer life. The touch of confidence. That's all. Not that you don't know how to pray. We've not really taken time to put confidence in our prayers. So it's time to do that. Let's bow our heads and pray. And if you didn't receive anything, just know it's your fault. No, no, wait, 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 wait. wait. Don't say I receive. We don't even know. You know what you want to ask God for. Do you believe you have received it? Each time we pray for people, the Lord always asks me, do you believe what you said? I say yes. yes then it is done. That's what he says to me. Yes, you believe it? I say yes. Then he says it's done. Yes, sir. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So what is it that you want? 
what is that desire you have? Now, I don't desire someone to die. If you desire me to die, it is you that will die. So, <laughs> just leave us alone. Mind your own business. <laughs> no man can kill me. So, I know you, you can <laughs> So if you are trying to pray for me to fall, the Bible says he's able to make me stand. So I can't fall. So boy, pray. Mind your own business and pray. All right, talk to the Lord now. Talk to the Lord. Don't say you, you, you don't express confidence in, in, in the heart. It's something you say with your Say it. Say something. Because I don't want people to know what I'm talking to God about. Talk to the Lord. Lay so proud. Zande, Shkila, Maso. Father, grant them testimonies for what they desire. Grant them testimonies. Grant them testimonies. Grant them testimonies. Lee, Sopri, Zende, Lekishko, Palitea, Koshamante, Zende, Kele, Proto, Monso, Prati, Akisho, Zondo, Kolopro, Degive, Senemiska. Zigele Mensko, Fontu Pratele Meridia, Kosekitia, Karide Kiposha Prati, Zandia Kata, Zagadali Manko Protokobo Shata Pratia, Le Kopro Shantia, Le Koprote. Tell him first before you speak in tongues, tell him what you want. Because you may say, Well, I don't really know what I'm saying. Let me tell God what I really want. Yeah, open your mouth, tell him. Father, grant them their testimonies. Grant them what they desire. As long as it's good before you and before men. Let the spirits in the earth, the blood and the water in the earth, favor them. Bear record of their confidence. Even as they ask you, Heavenly Father, the maker of the heavens and the earth and the seas and everything that in them is. Lord, we bless your name. More victories, more victories, more victories, more victories. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. And some of you who expect him to talk to you, he would speak to you. Talk to him. Say, protect his go protect. Santa. There's a confidence. Lord, I'm confident of what I'm asking. I will not change my mind over what I'm asking you. Nothing will ever make me change my mind. Nothing. Lord, I know it is time to pray. Save me from that dark hour. Save me from every dark hour coming. Lord, whatever dark hour I'm going through, help me to come out of it stronger than ever. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Lay sopra. I thank you for this confidence. This confidence. This confidence. This confidence. To ask anything. I thank you. Now my prayer life will be very attractive, very interesting, very exciting, full of victories, outstanding testimonies. Oh, having my desires met. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Le pra soto zilenene shkafa takifa tea. Lord, I thank you. I bless your name. 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 Talk to the Lord. Except you are ashamed of him. Talk to the Lord. Thank you for paying all the bills. Thank you for clearing my school loans. Thank you for paying my rent. Thank you for the provision of a glorious job. Thank you for the excellence of my children. Thank you for my children as they excel in their academics, as they prosper in all that they do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for open doors. Thank you for my marital life. Thank you for victories in my marital life. Thank you for our church. Thank you for opening churches for us in every city we go to. Thank you.
for greater grace, greater victories. Lay suffering, tally, scoffle it. Pray. We've not prayed in a long while. Pray. Pray. Don't be tired. Talk to the Lord. Lord, help me. Help me. May I never be lonely in my life. May I never be alone in my life. Talk to the Lord. Help me excel in my exams. Lord, guide my choices. Guide my choices. I surrender to you. Let the spirit in the earth, water and the blood, favor my choices. Favor my choices. May I never, may they help me out from costly mistakes. Father, deliver me from costly mistakes. Save me from costly mistakes, O oh God. Save me, save me, O oh God. Improve my choices, O oh God. Improve my choices. Lord, improve my life. Improve my life. Make my life better than before I came. Lord, make my life better. Lord, even as I go home, I go home with a new sense of confidence. I go home better than I came. I go home with a new sense of confidence. I go home, oh God, with a new sense of confidence. And my confidence will never die, no matter the opposition. Lee Sopra, Telly, Kisha. We've not prayed in a long while. Let's pray. Zanda Kalabra, Tevali, Tele Kosha. Kosoprete, Kasekete. Karandibo, Koprosekete. Masata, Pratebo, Kosete. Lord, bless my children. Settle their marriages. Settle their relationships. Help their jobs. Grant them promotion. May they excel in the academics. Open doors. Open doors. Father, send us premium helpers. Financial apostles to the ministry. Men and women committed to the vision of our father, Papa Joshua Aguila. Le Prasoto. Zendekele Pratos. Zugedele Kashata. Pali Tele Kepo Shataya. Mingle Skofre Tele Miska Pratia. Bali Teleko Proteni Miska. Zunga Dali Kapa Shataya Likoto. Mingle Sko Rosana Mantia. Open my eyes to see what men cannot see. Open my ears to hear what men cannot hear. Open my eyes to see what men cannot see. Open my ears to hear what men cannot hear. Lord, direct my footsteps. May my legs never take me to the place of the slaughter. May it never take me to the place where I will be destroyed. May it never take me to the place of failure. Le Soprati. Le Soprati. Le Soprati. Father, arrest any evil power from my father's house, from my mother's house, wanting to tie me down. Let the spirits, water and the blood, bearing record in the earth, fight my cause. Let them fight my cause. We activate their favor over my life. Le Soprati. Father, I can't remain like this. Lord, improve my life. Improve my life. Improve my life. Upgrade my life. Strengthen me. Enlarge my financial capacity. Father, you can trust me with heavenly resources, heavenly favor, heavenly fruitfulness. Father, you can trust me. Grant me the vineyard of heaven. Anoint me afresh, O oh God. Anoint me afresh. Father, use me as you please for your glory. Let the spirit in the earth, water and the blood, wherever I go under heaven, favor me all the days of my life. May they favor my children, my generation, my ministry, my calling. Kasoto Pretele Kisho, Zindele Keperadea Kopratene Makataya, Balite, Balite, Balite. Zondo Kopore de Keboshki Prasata. Father, may stupidity never fight my spiritual life. May share stupidity, poor choices, never fight my prayer life. Lord, improve my prayer life. Improve my prayer life. Improve my prayer life. Upgrade my prayer life. Strengthen my prayer life. Strengthen it, O God. Strengthen it, O God. We give you all the glory. 
Lord, this week is a glorious week for me. This month is a glorious month for me. This year is a glorious year for me. And every year, all the days of my life are glorious, majestic. May men see me as, a, as the favored one of the Lord. May they see me as the man of grace, man of honor, man of favor, man of miracles, man of signs and wonders. Lord, I'm yours, Lord. Lead so protected. Do what you will with my life for your glory and for the profit of all. Father, make my life whole again. 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 For your glory, for the victories, for the testimonies. Make my life whole again. I have this confidence that you have done it. I receive it, therefore I have it. I believe I receive it, therefore I have it. I believe I receive it, therefore I have it. I believe I receive it, therefore I have it. I believe I receive it, therefore I have it. I believe I receive it, therefore I have it. I have my desires met. I have my needs met. I have my desires met. I have my needs met. I believe I receive it, therefore I have it. I believe I receive it, therefore I have it. I believe I receive it, therefore I have it. I believe I receive it. Therefore, I have it. My life will never be the same again. I believe I receive it. Therefore, I have it. I believe I receive it. Therefore, I have it. Satan, Mandi, Sere, Kofi, Dene, Kari, Dia, Zunda, Kahra, Deke, Peshe, Pati, Monso, Preti, Bali, Kipu, Shata. I believe I receive it from my children. Therefore, they have it. I believe I receive it from my children, therefore they have it. I believe I receive it from my papa, therefore he has it. I believe I receive it for our ministry. Champions Royal Assembly North America, therefore we have it. Uncommon fruitfulness, uncommon growth. I believe we have received it, therefore we have it. It is done in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. In Jesus' name. How many of you believe God heard you? Yes, sir! Now, now that we have prayed about whatever we prayed about, do you know the next thing to do? Forget about it. Yeah? Because sometimes, yes, because it's done. Because sometimes you may remember, and it may, that remembrance can attack your, your confidence. So forget it. It's settled. Amen. Yes, amen. It's very easy. Yes, sir. Let the miracles remind you yes, sir. <laughs> what you prayed yes, about. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. Yeah, I like that. I like that, sir. You've prayed about it. You believe you receive it. You have it. Then forget about it. When it comes, you remember. Yes, yes sir. I like that one, sir. And you know, things like that Things that you pray that you receive and have, they never leave. Yes, sir. The only time you can lose them is when you choose to be stupid, mm-hmm. like I was in the past. You, know? you can pray for a marital partner that you can choose to lose. Don't blame him, blame you. <laughs> All right? Praise God. You can receive a job, pass an exam, get what you want, and act stupid and lose everything. Say not to me. So after you pray that you you believe you receive it and then have it, what do you do? Forget it. What should remind you? The miracle. The miracle of what you prayed about. Praise God. We give you all the glory. We give you all We give you all the glory. We give you all the Amen. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We 
give you honor. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. So, were you glad that the Lord made me change the subject? Yes. 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 This now. Your prayer life will be very vibrant yes. and effective. Yes, How many of you believe the prayers you prayed now, you yes. settled at least a great chunk of your future? Yes. This is the confidence. And someone says, let's pray about it. I say, no, I've settled it already. Mm. You've settled it already. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, so let's give our offerings now.